The first time I realized I discovered something, I was 12. I was standing in the most beautiful home even now I have ever been in. And I could tell you how the living room opened up to the Pacific Ocean or how every room smelled of the shore hummed in my ear like I myself was the coast. Mm. But memories fade. The most prominent in my mind is the joy. At 12 years old, I discovered a joy that was directly related to the built environment. Up until that point, I thought nothing of walls or ceilings or the lack thereof, but in that moment, I thought to myself, wow, I want to make something that makes someone feel like this too. And I can see it clear as day, because when everything is new, anything is possible, and 11-year-old me was sure that adulthood would come with the kind of freedom that guaranteed my wildest dreams, which at the time was a list that consisted of cleaning my room when I wanted. <laughs> but now, at the wise old age of 12, I was adding architect to the list. This is a poem about discovery. When you lay your eyes on it for the first time, they are wide. Whether out of fear or enchantment, your palms are delicate, quaking even, you haven't been this close to path-breaking in a while. Since you were a child, friends and loved ones who have been through their own spout of defeat greet you at your exit. You've decided to leave. Leave behind everything you thought you knew. And they love you, so they warn you of how difficult, how dangerous, how irreversible, which is arguably always true, but for you, it feels like a ghost they are seeing, and you are more frightened by being haunted than you are of death. You jump the metaphorical cliff, begin finding some wings on your way down. Now, this is the perfect time to recognize that throughout your journey, at least one thing a loved one said to you will be true. For example, you are not good enough. Yet, skills are built. You will lose what you have. Maybe you're making room for more. This is just too hard, and it is for a beginner. But what about when you're an expert? What about when you try and you try, and the people you thought would guide you don't? But you try, and you try, and the thing you thought wasn't for you kind of starts fitting you like a glove. And you try, and you try, and the answers you thought you wouldn't find pick you up in the middle of a downfall and sit you upright, and you try. What do they say? 10,000 hours? How many times? You've been hugging the air long enough to know this path is not breaking. It winds, and it's hard, and it's muddy, and sometimes it's not even a path. It's just you fumbling around. But look at all of the beautiful things you found. Look at all these wounds that heal if you let them. At 20 years old, I was on my first TEDx stage speaking in my most impressive cadence about collective economics. I'd graduated from wanting to create buildings to wanting to create communities through collective economics. Now this, in my mind, was the cure to screaming into the void at community meetings or displacement by development. I thought this could change the world, except I didn't really know how real estate development worked. <laughs> but my parents insisted that I get a master's degree in something so, after graduating from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with a degree in business, not architecture, I decided that I would get my master's degree in real estate development from New York University. And the day I arrived in the Big Apple, I lost my housing. One of the roommates I was supposed to be staying with had violated her lease and gotten evicted. And had I signed that lease then, I would have been on the hook for nearly $3,000 a month as a recent college graduate with no stable income. And the financial aid that I thought was coming did not. The friend who had helped me drive down to New York in a minivan packed full of my things was now helping me haul it to a storage unit where I cried before promptly deciding I wasn't giving up 
even though I could totally feel myself giving up. I spent the next six months living out of Airbnbs in a clothes hamper before settling in the Bronx with a woman named Miss Pat. She let me stay at her place in exchange for keeping the property clean. And it was spotless. I was grateful and completely humbled by life. A few months pass, I reluctantly take out a loan and start school. And there I was. For the first time in my life ever, I thought to myself, yeah, probably not going to be changing the world. And aside from that, I thought not having a stable place to stay was the hard part. But sitting in class, learning about everything that I didn't know that I didn't know was much harder. See, I was the kind of person who was skeptical of the big developer, which is why I wanted to learn more about them. But then I started learning the other side of that story. I learned that there were many kinds of developers, and very few of them were actively trying to do anybody any harm, even though the past is a scary one. I learned that resources around affordable housing were limited and highly competitive, and first-timers had a hard time filling out the applications or even paying the cost to get started. And building buildings was expensive and complicated and collective economics. That thing I thought I'd be queen of by now <laughs> was not as simple as let's just band together and fund this thing. I had to let go of something that I had had in my heart for over a decade, and it was heartbreaking. It was also then that I realized that I'd been ignoring all these other parts of myself so long that I wasn't sure who I was without this overarching goal directing my life. So after soaking for some time, meaning months, I had no choice but to acknowledge all these incredible moments, too, that slowly but surely showed me my life had to be more than achieving these big, hairy, audacious goals. It had to be about friendship as well. Had to be about dancing. Had to be about sitting idle in the park watching the birds and a pretty wild weekend brunch and a lot of laughter and a beautiful work of art and poetry. Well, when I finally did graduate with a master's in real estate development, I thought to myself, well, that was quite a debacle. <laughs> but I still wanted to create, and I thought, if I could just get a job, I would figure out all that other stuff later. And then I got home, and I could barely get a job. And here I was thinking New York was the hard part. This is a poem about growth. <clears throat> it's cyclical. I think the thing they don't tell you is that hard thing you conquered back then will happen again, only this time it will be harder, it's cyclical. And all those difficult things will start to feel like the everyday, the mundane, you don't even know that you've grown this way, but you're different now. And you can tell that if the same thing from back then were to happen to you now, you'd poke your chest out, hold your head high, and say, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> and it does, but you're better for it. This version of you is slightly more equipped to tip the scale to the better side of being alive. At least you're going for it. At least you're going forward. At least on the coldest days, you will remember that summer breeze will happen again. And when you're feeling lonely, you will remember you are not alone. Not everybody on earth will be there when you need them, but somebody will be there even if it takes some time, it takes some searching. See, when I leave this earth, I want people to say things like, she drank a lot of water. <laughs> she knew some good food spots. She lived her life well. What good is changing the world if yours is falling apart? What matters a title if I am unsure what to call myself when they ask me, how are you doing? I want to reply, I am well. 
Well, I finally did get that job I wanted and I also started investing in my community. I bought my first property from the land bank in my area and at the time I didn't have the money to create any buildings so my partner and I put a park there instead with the help of friends and neighbors and strangers. And when it was done, kids came by and played soccer Families would play music and have cookouts. Friends would lay in the hammocks and read books, and I was so excited. I mean, anybody doing anything at all there made me so excited. So when I bought my second piece of property from the land bank, I still didn't have any money to create any buildings. But my partner had the idea of building a skate ramp. And then we did with the help of over a hundred people. And that's when it hit me. Right there in real time was my childhood dream of creating spaces that brought people joy. And even more, I was part of a group of people that was encouraging over 100 citizens of Omaha to invest in joy in our neighborhood. And it looked nothing like I thought it would. But in a way, it was so much better. This one experience at 12 years old changed the trajectory of my life. And all that time, I'd been trying to achieve this utopian vision of changing the world. But the key, really, was the gift of authenticity, was honoring myself and my interests alongside others. That is what mattered most. Now, when we talk about changing the world or following your dreams, we have to talk about this notion of being realistic. Because at several points in my life, obviously, I was totally unrealistic, thinking I could change the world, create communities, encourage thousands of people to invest. It looked nothing like I thought it would. But I see it clear as day now. Had I never believed at 12 years old that I could change the world, I don't think I would have even tried. But I'm glad I did. 